Hello everyone, I'm Pascal, Victor Alpha 2, Papa Victor. In my last video, I was talking about a new equipment that I had in my shack, but I was not allowed to show you because I had to wait the official release date of the manufacturer. That equipment is actually the SDR Play RSP2, which is an upgrade version from the RSP1, which I review about a month ago, that you can find also some video on my YouTube channel. Uh, this SDR has more antenna ports and a few features more that you can find also in the new version of the SDR UNO software. If you have an RSP1, you can also benefit from the new feature that is in the software of SDR UNO. So you can download it now, it's already available. Today I just had a Skype session with John Hudson from SDR Play and Thanks to him, he agreed to answer some questions and explain the differences between the RSP2 and the RSP1. So, here's the interview. Hope you enjoy. Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon, Pascal. So, hi from England. <laughs> yeah, hi from Canada. So, it was, uh, it was tough for us to settle uh, a video conference, especially in the weeks with the, uh, with the, uh, the time difference between England and Canada, but thanks for agreeing to do that interview with me today well i'm very very honored to be invited so um it's great to have the chance to meet your viewers and uh, just say a little bit about our new rsp2 yeah, sdr yeah, yeah, radio yeah. So, yeah yeah that that that's a big day for you guys there right at sdr play it is we've um we've spent uh, the last couple of years since we launched the RSP1, which you can see going in the background, yeah. it's um, uh, really uh, become a, a well-established and much-loved uh, sort of mid-range SDR receiver amongst uh, both the hobbyists and the radio hams and increasingly uh, some of the um, industrial users. And particularly with them in mind, we wanted to go the next level of adding a bunch of features which um, allow uh, more um, precise and specialized use of our SDR. Along the way, we've added a bunch of uh, things that benefit radio amateurs as well, and one or two things that they particularly have asked for and um, I think are going to be excited about. So we've now got the RSP2. Mm. So, the, uh, I've been having uh, the RSP1 for a little while, and let me tell you, I don't see why a shortwave listener will buy anything else now, since I tried the SDR Play. The SDR UNO software is incredible. The interface is just good looking, but very functional. So congratulations on that. And, and, and I have, I'm a lucky guy, having the SDR Play RSP2 as well. And, it's another impressing unit. It's the continuity of the RSP1 plus plus plus. So, 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 what's the main difference uh, between the let, two? Let, let, yeah, let me just run through some of the additions that we've added to the RSP2. Obviously, the RSP2 is going to cost uh, quite a bit more than the RSP1, uh, but for that, you get ten built-in front-end pre-selection filters and substantially enhanced sens se selectivity we've extended the frequency coverage down to one kilohertz for the sort of vlf and experimental people down there we've opened up the filters on one of the rf ports um, that's another big difference about the rsp2 there are multiple antenna ports so the radio goes from one kilohertz to two gigahertz there's two 50 ohm ports each of which is capable of receiving between 1.5 megs and 2 gigs. And then there's a high impedance port, that green socket there, for which we also provide the um, uh, plug to connect uh, directly to either a wire antenna or balance feeder. Mm -hmm. And um, this goes down to 1 kilohertz. This will be good for long wire antenna. Yeah, for, lo yeah, for long yeah. wire, yeah. Log wire antennas, yeah, it's particularly good for that. Um, what else? We've um, you have a reference clock also uh, it, on the other yeah, side, yeah. Yeah, we, we we've done a number of things on the stability front in terms of um, uh, added a a, a 0.5 ppm TCXO trimmable down to 0 
01 ppm. So in conjunction with our SDR Uno software, you can uh, trim it and then it will remember with the EEPROM within it that um, where it's set and it's then kind of set to 0.01 ppm. Uh, so that is life. good if, for, if you want to listen to for higher frequency like UHF yeah. and so the stability and the precision will be just great. That's yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, and for the and for the real, you know, research guys out there doing radio astronomy, maybe passive radar and stuff, um, you know, they've got the chance to synchronize multiple RSPs okay, yeah. together. We've got an external clock in and out, and you could even um, tie to a say a GPS reference uh, device to get even more accuracy should you need it. Oh. So that, those, those features um, collectively make for. Um, uh, a, a bu bunch more applications in the uh, RF lab, particularly the I, you know, the IoT. You probably hear a lot about the Internet yeah. of Things, and um, a, there's a lot of sub uh, gigahertz frequencies being used um, for short um, distance, um, sort of fire and forget standards like LoRaWAN, which is one of them, yeah. and this again can be a very useful portable uh, spectrum analyzer for those type of applications. C can you stack so, up some RSP2? Can you stack yeah, yeah. it up and, and, and uh, listen different frequency using the same software at the same time? or um, You'd have multiple uh, yeah. versions of, of, okay. of the STR software going. Okay, I okay. should say, I should point out, obviously over time we've built up a capability with the RSP1 to work on pretty much all the popular SDR programs out there like HD SDR we work closely with Simon Brown um, the author of SDR console and that's all going to come again but on day one of the launch we're just up and running with SDR Uno uh, but all that other stuff will come in time just keep an eye on the website on our blog to see how how we're progressing on that let me uh, let me just go back to some of the other yeah, um, yeah. features of that course. we've added um, one of the two RF ports that goes up to the two gigs um, includes a bias T option. So this actually supplies a DC voltage up the coax to your antenna where you might want to have a, a remote um, uh, masthead amplifier. And so that's, that's pretty good for that. Um, another thing we've done is to um, add some... Uh, some filters to block um, the biggest cause of interference to add extra um, blocking for FM transmitters and medium wave transmitters. These are um, built in selectable notch filters that yeah. just reduce um, the strength of those signals because those can cause uh, intermod problems and, and um, uh, so, so create this, so uh, alien uh, signals yeah. in unwanted parts of the spectrum so so this is useful let's say i'm i'm listening on 40 meters on one virtual receiver i'm receiving uh on 80 meters on another another uh, virtual receivers and i open my spectrum up to 10 megahertz so i can use the notch filter if i get interference let's say for exactly. a strong stay broadcast station exactly. if you live close by or something so you can use it and still enjoying the wide you know uh, open uh, spectrum Yes, okay. it, it's it's specifically the medium wave interferers yeah. and the, the FM broadcasters, because those tend to be the, you know, particularly if you're based in a city, you've probably got a pretty strong local FM uh, range of stations. So, so those um, those have all been added. Um, we've had over the there's been a lot of debate actually about um, how, where, you know, how how important is screening? We do use a very rugged, strong plastic case for the uh, RSP1 and the RSP2. Um, the RSP1, uh, sorry, the RSP2 now has um, a, an RF uh, screening within it. So it's a metal coating um, tied to the um, so outers of the coax sockets of the USB. To It's like a Faraday cage. Okay. That Some people have asked for that, particularly if you're in a, say, a laboratory where you've got some... Um, high power VHF or UHF yeah. and above, which, you know, potentially can start to... It's good to, for AMS yeah, too. Yeah. It's good for AMS too, yeah. Ha, yeah, yeah. yeah the, yeah, the, we're, uh, we're transmitting, so RF is part of our shack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, um, of course, you know, the, 
there's still a need to consider screening your USB mm-hmm. cable yeah. with a, a, a toroid uh, to stop RF uh, leak, leaking in through the uh, USB cable. So I think um, uh, uh, those are the main things. I do encourage people to look at our website, www.sdrplay.com, uh, just to see uh, the full spec and also compare some of the um, specific um, enhanced performance of the RSP2. But I do want to stress, for those people just um, wanting a pan adapter, wanting uh, you know something uh, that's significantly better than an 8-bit dongle, then the RSP1 remains yeah. a, a very good uh, sort of uh, entry point um, product. That, that's what I, what I would recommend for I'm um, just wanting a pan adapter, go with the RSP1. And if you wanted something more serious as a shortwave listener or as a receiver, then go to the RSP2. Is that, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that uh, that's, that's a fair comment. Yep. And, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- thank you very much. And uh, I really, I, I have the RSP2 and the RSP1 uh, on and I, I, I noticed that the RSP2, um, the uh, noise floor level is uh, lower you know, for that's an operator's point of view. Just notice that the noise floor is low, and it sounds very good. It's, it's impressing, and uh, the SDR. You know, there, there's a new software also out for this one with all the feature yeah. you said about notch and every, in, antenna selection. Yes. Yeah. So, so fundamental to um, really getting the most out of the RSP is SDR Uno, uh, which is our own software which started life as studio one uh used to actually cost 179 dollars in its own right um we took that software and are developing it and improving it and so obviously all the features i talked through are supported in the latest release version 1.1 of str uno so all the um you know switches to turn on and off um bias t or select antennas are all in, in integrated gain, gain in control as well software yeah the gain control the um the fact that we've now got um software selectable variable gain it's a, the rsp1 just had on off at the lna and the rsp2 has um something like uh, eight different levels of um of, of gain to optimize um the, the noise floor and, and again that just improves the the uh, uh, the receive experience and um, the other thing that's even the RSP1 uh, users can really benefit from now is the uh, calibrated S meter and also uh, we have the cal- calibrated RF power meter with um, over 100 dBs of usable range so uh, all these things together um, mean that uh, we obviously recommend our own RS, uh, RS you know, you know um, but I, I shouldn't un- underestimate the support we get from uh, you know people like Simon Brown with SDR console the guys uh, you know who uh, have, have made HDS HDSDR uh, possible and um, and then finally people like you spreading the word on SDR getting the knowledge out there I think is just um, tremendous and I've got to just uh, mention two other guys um, particularly um, Paul Jones and Mike Ladd. There's also Preb and Lowe's, but you know, and, and then where, where do you stop mentioning people? But particularly uh, Paul and Mike, uh, who really f- got the um, Facebook group off the ground, the SDR Play Facebook group off the ground, and they have generated these cookbooks for HDSDR. For Which I used HDR to set console. up mine when I started and was At, awesome. Yeah. And, and SDR, you know, and, and these are awesome. And, and, and they've been beavering away to make sure we have the sort of SDR 2, um, RSP2 version, rather, um, fully fully there and available um, here, you know, as we uh, set out on an exciting journey. But it is the community that, that has made this product. Um, if you go to our community um, page, uh, site within the uh, uh, website, uh, go to our forum, you just uh, see the level of help which um, people give each other as they learn together the new things they can do with uh, with SDR. And the same within this Facebook group. Um, there's uh, there's also an SDR Uno Facebook group 
separate. Um, they tend to overlap a bit in terms of, of what they do. But it is that community that's really kind of um, kept us going, uh, you know, just to try and sort of um, uh, expand the range. And, and this is really the beginning of a journey. We've, this is the uh, RSP2. So who knows what the RSP3 uh, might be in some <laughs> later day. Maybe it will transmit. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the inputs coming. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, thanks to you and SDR Play for being so close to your customers and, your, uh, and the community because it all starts from you guys that are, you know, transparent with us, uh, sharing all that information. So I really appreciate it, and I'm sure my viewers and all the community of SDR Play appreciate that open opening from uh, the SDR Play team. So. Okay, thank well, and thank you, Pascal. Thank you very Thanks. much. Have a nice day. Bye. Ciao. This concludes this video. I hope you liked it. If you want to support this channel, just subscribe now and uh, stay tuned for more video to come. Thanks for watching and 70 trees.